Hey everyone, this is Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats, and today I'm going to talk to you about the king of all sandwiches, the greatest sandwich in the world, the BLT. Now, there's a lot of people who think that a BLT is a bacon sandwich that's seasoned with lettuce and tomato, but I think a BLT is actually a tomato sandwich seasoned with bacon and lettuce. Why do I say that? Well, it's because the tomato is by far the most difficult ingredient to get right. You can only get good tomatoes like two months out of the year, and without a great tomato, a BLT just isn't worth making. It makes the BLT one of the few truly seasonal sandwiches, and it's something that I look forward to every summer. The Prime BLT Directive, every other ingredient is in service of the tomato. And from that, everything else follows. Now here's how I make mine. BLT rule number one, use excellent tomatoes. Off-season tomatoes are picked while they're still hard and green so that they can be shipped without bruising. Then they're gassed with ethylene, which makes them turn red and ripen, but they never develop flavor. Really great tomatoes have to be fully ripened on the vine. I like to use meaty heirloom varieties like Brandywine or Purple Cherokee, though any fat beefsteak tomato is gonna do. What you're really looking for is a tomato that's as juicy as a slab of prime rib. BLT rule number two, use good bacon. Most inexpensive bacon is injected with brine as a quick and dirty way to pump it full of salt to preserve it. The problem is this adds a ton of moisture. Juiced up bacon's gonna curl, splatter, and cook unevenly. You wanna avoid bacons that include ascorbate or sodium erythorbate which are perfectly safe chemicals, but they're required by law in these pumped up bacon, which makes it an easy way to identify them. Bacon labeled dry cured are the fanciest and usually have great flavor, but I find them to be too chewy for a BLT. They pull out of the sandwich as you bite and threaten the structural integrity. That leaves immersion cured bacon, which is my BLT bacon of choice. It's made by soaking pork belly in a brine before smoking it, and a good brand will be thick cut, but cook up tender and crisp. That takes us to rule number three, cook the bacon crisp. I tried cooking bacon a number of different ways, including sous vide, in the microwave, and in the oven. In the oven is great for a crowd, but if I'm just making a single sandwich or two, I prefer the griddle, using a press to keep the bacon nice and flat so that it renders fat and crisps evenly. Actually, in place of a heavy bacon press, I like to use a light and maneuverable mortaring trowel, which you can pick up from the hardware store or home center. It's the best tool for smashing a burger, it won't crush your bread, and it's perfect for refinishing your tile floors. Normally I like my bacon a little chewy, but for this sandwich, I like to cook my bacon very crisp to contrast texturally with the tomato. BLT rule number four, don't waste the bacon fat. And this is a big one. Here's the idea. We're making toast and we've got rendered bacon fat sitting in front of us. So why don't we put two and two together and make five here? Just like with grilled cheese, you want even browning, which means toasting low and slow. A good rule of thumb, if you can't karaoke your way through at least one song before the bread's browned, like you on the you're browning it too hot and fast. And skip the extra crusty sourdough and ciabatta. They're gonna crush the tomato. A softer Pullman-style sandwich bread or Japanese shokuban is the way to go. Rule number five, plenty of mayo. There are parts of the country where picking the wrong mayonnaise can get you in some serious trouble, so whether you're partial to Creamy Dukes, Classic Hellman's, or the Tangy Zip of Miracle Whip, the important thing is to slather it on both sides of toast and to be generous. And if you've never tried homemade, do it. It's one of the few life-changing events that takes place start to finish in under two minutes. Check out my other video for the technique. BLT rule number six. Forget the arugula, put down the baby spinach, and leave that wilt-prone mesclun mix in the fridge. They're not invited to the BLT party. What we want is something sweet and crunchy, like the tender interior leaves of the freshest romaine, bib, or green leaf you can get. Or, if you're like me, sweet, crunchy iceberg. Shredded iceberg, actually, which not only adds crunch, but provides a buffer zone for tomato juices to collect, which protects your toast. BLT rule number seven, and this is the most important one, season that tomato. Salted tomatoes don't just taste saltier, but also sweeter, more fragrant, and more juicy. Salt draws moisture out of that tomato slice and gets your saliva working overtime. It's like turning your taste buds up to 11. Salt suppresses our sense of bitterness, making that tomato taste sweeter. Salt also triggers our brain to pay more attention to our nose, making the tomato more fragrant as well. Fresh cracked black pepper accentuates the flavor by contrasting the tomato's sweetness. And finally, BLT rule number eight, cut it into triangles. Triangles just taste better. Maybe it's because they fit better in our mouths. Maybe it's because they remind me of the Triforce. Whatever the reason, it's a simple fact of life. Follow these rules and you are going to have the greatest lunch known to mankind. I could eat this forever.